Super Media Bros Podcast is a founding member of the Odd Pods Media Network. Super Media Bros. Welcome to the Super Media Bros Podcast, where two best friends give comedically informative takes on movies, music, pro wrestling, and more. I'm Richie. Happy New Year. It's 2024, and this is the first episode of the new year. This episode was actually recorded in early December of 2023, just to be prepared and to get a lot of our stuff backlogged for the holiday season. But now that it's the new year, it's time to release this episode upon you, the listener. Most of you may or may not know that I am a huge fan of the band Ghost, like to the point that Myself and a couple of friends of mine admin a shit posting group dedicated to this band on Facebook. It's a lot of fun. And I'm a big advocate for uh, the fact that your online friends are your friends too. Like, there's a big misconception that people think that online people cannot be your friends because you simply haven't met in person. And that's complete bullshit, in my opinion. To that, I say it's amazing that you can find so many people from so many different walks of life in groups like this that are all together to celebrate one common love that you have. It could be music, movies, art, professional wrestling, you name it. Like literally anything that we discuss on this show, Devin and I, it's shit that we loved and it's shit that actually bonded our friendship. I say all that to say that I have met, like many people in this group, have met a very talented, lovely gentleman by the name of Johnny Bush, who is a fantastic illustrator and has actually designed quite a few merch pieces for Ghost. And he and I got to just bullshitting one day uh, in a chat together. And I was like, hey, do you want to come hang out with me and just talk about movies and art and music and like, pretty much anything because we we actually wound up having a shit ton in common and it was a lot of fun i definitely want to have johnny back onto the show to discuss more films i would love to have him back on to do a cult cinema saturday because as it turns out he and i have a lot in common when it comes to horror movies but i'm gonna shut the hell up for now and i'm going to just roll the tape on the conversation that I had with Johnny Bush. So sit back and enjoy. Super Media Bros. I'm hanging out with my buddy Johnny Bush, uh, who is a fantastic artist. He and I met in a ghost shit posting group on Facebook called Gaunt's Posting. And, uh, you know, this is really the, the topic that brought us uh, as far as like being uh, pals now and a ton of people uh, in this group. You know, it's great. Uh, we, we all have met a shit ton of people from all over the world, like different walks of life. Johnny is across the pond over in the UK. Uh, I've got friends in there from Germany, Finland, and Canada. You name it. We, we, we're all like bound by the same topic. A bunch of fucking misfits, a bunch of people, <laughs> you know, just bound by the same group. But uh, Johnny has drawn a ton of designs for this band hell chances are if you've seen a t-shirt of theirs or wednesday 13 or a ton of other bands in a hot topic store or on their websites or anything like that chances are it came from you so what's going on man <laughs> yeah no I'm, I'm good thank you I'm, I'm just kind of starting to wrap up for the end of the year finish off the little jobs that are kind of leading into the big ones next year um yeah it's been a very busy year but it's nice to kind of put an end to it now you know right i can't even imagine uh the amount of like commission work or anything else that you've you've had you know to, to work on yeah you know yeah absolutely it's um it's always a, a a strain towards the end of the year because you find a lot of bands and as is the case this uh holiday season with ghost is they kind of all of a sudden go oh we have not got holiday designs ready okay message everyone message you know everyone on the mailing list we need a design we need a design so that everybody gets bombarded with requests and we we have two days to draw them and then nothing gets approved <laughs> and it's, holy uh, shit <laughs> yeah that's a deadline yeah. and a, a half holy fuck yeah yeah this um we had oh, i had an, e an email come through uh from global merch services who 
uh, my correspondence with Ghost. And basically, I was fine when he emailed me. I was absolutely in like, you know, the, the, the pinnacle of health. And he said, can you do me a holiday design in, it was like three days. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's that's cool. You know, I can sketch it out tonight and I'll do it over two nights. It's cool. And then he replied, um, my guy at Global Merch, and he was like, that's cool. Can you do me two designs? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do. Because I, I think that's why they come to me sometimes because they know that I can work quite quickly. Um, and then the day after, I became severely, severely ill with, we think it was COVID or, you know, some sort of, stomach flu but i was crippled over you know bedridden but these these two designs got done and submitted um and then we never heard back about them but a christmas design that they approved in november last year came out for christmas this year so swings and roundabouts yeah i was gonna say because i remember seeing that one and you finally talking about it uh on your personal socials and in the group uh it was the yeah. uh, santanas i think was the design yes. name across it yeah and I, that was gonna kind of lead me into a, a question for you too because first of all how does one get involved with these bands like as an artist because i i, I understand that sometimes it's either the luck of the draw or like people submit the stuff and i saw that this had been long approved like since 2023 or 2022 i'm sorry and i'm saying yeah. like holy shit that's a long time to have to keep quiet about a <laughs> badass piece of art dude yeah. it's like, look i'm i'm just as good as you know you or anybody else that can do that shit but it eats at me i'm like god i want to show this off so yeah. bad so yeah like it's it's wild that you've had a couple designs now like as of this year that yeah. you know it, that they'll probably hold off on until maybe next year but holy shit dude that was a that was a great well, design the, the Santa thank Nazi. you very much I, yeah that was um that was just a goofy idea i had I, I was i think i was probably getting close to christmas and i thought shit i could really do with some money you know <laughs> uh, so th th the idea is that most of us do is well let's submit a design because you're either going to get a no or you're going to get paid so i'd been watching stuff and reading stuff and i really had this f fun idea to do um Papa is a sort of Santa Krampus crossbreed with sort of references to the devil and Dante's Inferno and all, and all these kind of things. And I think they like that kind of stuff. They like things that are a bit deeper than they appear on the surface. And, you know, because the fans like all the lore and the speculations. Why has he got the Papa's heads in a box? What does this mean? Is he, you know, go bring that? It's just, and it's so fun to see. You know, a lot of the time we're just going, I just drew it. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just funny. <laughs> but um, yeah, with the, with the things that take a long time, it's hard because I just want to show it to people. And some, some of these things have literally no timeline on them. Um, I have about four or five other designs that they approved well over a year ago, probably close to two years ago. It's like, will they see the light of day? I don't know. Um, so I've just got this big folder on my computer with literally like 20 approved designs for bands that you can't do anything with. You know, I've got stuff um, for Ozzy Osbourne waiting to go. Uh, but Damn. <laughs> Can't do anything. <laughs> Talk about do not open till Christmas, man. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Dude, so we were talking a little bit earlier, and um, it's interesting how you, you came into all this, really. And I think, as is the case with a lot of artists and musicians, even during lockdown, really, when the lockdowns are happening yeah. and everything, everybody had a lot of free time on their hands. And, you know, I both hated it because I couldn't see people, you know, we all couldn't sure. see our friends or family and things like that. But another thing that came out of it was, at least for me, you know, I was able to devote more time uh, doing music, you know, on my own. And then, sure. you know, I don't care what anybody says. I feel like, you know, video games are a good form of stress relief and a good escape, course, and for, yeah. you know, good for your mental health. I got to play, you know, a ton of fucking video games and shit like that. But you were, you know, able to dive into your art, <laughs> you know, and um, yeah. get really essentially paid for it, you know, because a lot of our jobs, uh, like I was an essential worker uh, through it. So I but my hours were cut, you know, obviously, but sure, I yeah. had more free time you know, to do the shit I wanted to do. Yeah. So it was cool. You uh, telling me you were able to kind of just delve into that. Yeah. I, um, I was lucky enough to be told that, you know, you don't have to come to work. We'll pay you full wage. So I'd like to say that I dived into my artwork full time for like four months, but what I actually did for sort of three months and three weeks and four days was, um, 
I drank a lot of alcohol in the garden because we in in England we were going through an Indian summer and it was like the hottest it's been in ninety years or something. Dude, I remember hearing um, about that. Like, I don't know how you guys do it without. Like, I've heard y'all don't have like built-in air conditioning units or whatever no. over there. That's so no, funny. Like, Look, dude, I come, <laughs> I come from I come from Louisiana where it's Satan's asshole during the summer. So yeah. like we have to have it. So yeah. I was just sitting here going, like I've got a couple of friends that live out that way. And I was like, how the fuck do you guys do it? Like I, I, I couldn't. It's, it's, it's so rare for it to be that hot here. You know, we're more um, focused on like double glazing our windows. So it's not so cold all the time. But when it's that hot, you've just got to keep the doors open, the windows open. So I was just day drinking all day. The kids were having the time of their life, you know, playing in the garden. We got ducks to run around in the garden. Um, and it was all very nice, but it was a very pivotal moment at the end of it. Because I, like I was saying earlier, I had, I had one night left. The depression was setting in. That I had to go back to work tomorrow. I had one ice cold beer left and the option to either drink it or do a piece of artwork. Um, and I think I, the reason I went to do some art was artwork was because the few days before I'd drawn something for the band Calabrese, again, just as fan art, submitted it to them. And they was like, let's put it on a t-shirt. So inside I was like, oh, maybe it'll work for a different band as well. And uh, I said to my wife, look, do I drink the beer or do I do this piece of just fan art for Wednesday 13, who I've been a fan of since I was young? And um, she said, oh, just do the picture. You might as well, you know, it worked out for Calibri. So do, do it for Wednesday. I was like, yeah. So I drew this picture in whatever weird style I was drawing in at the time. It was very simple and stylistic. I submitted it to Wednesday with no expectation of a reply. I had never spoken to him at this point and just left it there. And then about two weeks later, I was getting groceries and he popped up on Instagram and he was like, this is sick. Can we use it? I was like, yeah, you know, 15 year old me wetting himself in the, you know the supermarket <laughs> um and i was like shit yeah i was like i don't even want money for it just have it just use it um so he did and then that was it i said you know if you need anything else just give me a shout um then like three days later he was like oh could you do me another one i was like yeah okay and then another, probably because i was doing it for for free at the time um but you know i had to make myself indisposable because I, I had the brain pattern of just going make yourself as in his pockets as possible and uh, just show him what you can do. Right. So I did. Yeah. And then everything that he needed, he's had a web series at the time for he, his Patreon was big during lockdown and that's all the content was there. So I did sort of artwork for animations inside of his web videos. I, for, for two years, I illustrated a comic uh, and wrote a comic every month uh, for him, did all his artwork and that. And that was really how I got started with Wednesday, you know, and I kind of, I think lockdown was the reason that that came to, because I don't think if he, if he was that busy with all of his fan club stuff, I wouldn't have been necessary. So I'm very thankful for that. And then through Wednesday, I, I say got bigger and bigger. I've not, I've just, I'm just a guy in a kitchen, but, um, <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah. You're, so lockdown was. You're big to a lot of us, though, man. Like, cause we and I and I can honestly say that I speak on at least on behalf of a lot of us in the Ghost fandom. Like, we appreciate the shit out of you, and we we adore your art, man. Like, I know it's yours when I see it. Like, you have a certain look to your stuff, and I was gonna bring that back around. Is I love that I can tell just from your line work and your shading and everything else yeah. that. You you have a lot of inspiration from horror and punk rock and the macabre and I love that shit. Even if it doesn't appear like you know to the naked eye that way, if you yeah. look hard enough, it's fucking there, man. And we dig your shit. And like the only problem that I have with it is that I don't have enough money to buy all of it at the same fucking time because <laughs> I definitely want every damn bit of it, and we we all do. So like I said, we. We love it, man. And thank you. Uh, I yeah, appreciate that. For sure, dude. It's it's great. And we're always looking forward to seeing more of it. You know, I was wanting to make mention if anybody out there has seen a ghost t shirt in Hot Topic or like online <laughs> somewhere, chances are Johnny's drawn the son of a bitch. So congr <laughs> congratulations, you own a piece of this man's art. <laughs> I don't I think I own one one t shirt of the things I've done. Gosh, wh um, which one? It is. I've got it out. I won't get it because it'll make all ruffles and noises. Um, you, you the can, go ahead. Three. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah, uh, it's still in the back. It's the Papa Three uh, portrait yeah. T-shirt. Yeah, love that one. 
you know, we all love the Papas for different reasons. Like every every one of them has like their own hardcore fans. You know, and I'm speaking to yeah. uh, anybody out there that listens to Ghost uh, knows what we're about to talk about. If you're if you don't have a fucking clue <laughs> about Ghost, long story short, damn near with every album cycle, there is a new figure at the front of the band singing for them, and uh, it's Papa Emeritus, either the first, second, third, or fourth, or by their lovely nicknames, Primo, Secundo, Terzo, and Cardi, uh, or Copia, <laughs> which, Papa 3, uh, we yeah. we have a shitload of Terzo fans in the house, which yeah. it's not hard to see why. He's he's just a, he's a little guy. He's a little fucker, and we love him. <laughs> we love him. So it's no wonder you've got you've got the third no. on your in your bag. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he was, that was, um, it's funny enough, that was the, the first t-shirt of that run of shirts that i did again i was just bored one evening i wasn't painting it with the idea of submitting it i was just bored and needed to do something because a lot of my work that i've been kind of typecast for over the years is very stylized very sort of not comic looking but you know flat colors that kind of thing um but i'm a painter at heart and i like photo you know or as photo realistic in my style as i like to do um and i was just i just Side painting it and i was in the throes of changing up some submissions for ghost anyway so i spoke to my guy um eric at global merch and i was like just i just show you this um i don't want to submit it or anything i just thought it'd be cool for you to see and uh he was like that's really cool he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna get this looked at and i was like oh oh yeah sure yeah sure <laughs> um i was like just so you know as well i've started doing papa 2 as well like again I, I, i'm not trying to submit these things i just have I needed things to post on my Instagram. Right. Um, and then he emailed me back and was like, yeah, uh, Tobias wants you to do one of all of them. I was <laughs> like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Have you ever seen Office Space? Uh, uh, yes, yeah. Uh, it, it, I can just picture the guy coming back to, yeah, hi. Uh, if you, could, if, if you <laughs> yeah. could just have those Papa TPS reports on my desk for Monday, that would be great. <laughs> like, oh, just, yeah. you know? <laughs> That's exactly what it was. And uh, All of a sudden, I'd, I'd gone from having this really fun like by evening painting like just like relaxation session that I was doing to now going shit I've got to paint like you know how how many papas are there a million it felt like at the time release things took like eight nine hours to paint each Mm. um but again I was like okay well I've got like three four days off work how does three four days sound so we knocked them all out in probably under a week I painted them and I think there was like maybe two three critiques with them and one of them was like you have to have the whole mitre in if you paint him i was like yeah but i don't really want to <laughs> to be fair you know these things are taking ages but i i changed them and um primo needed to look a bit more haggard and refined so but that that was that was a really nice job to do and they they were really well received through hot topic those are the, some of the shirts i was uh, kind of making mention of earlier if you've seen a, any of the designs in a hot topic i love those very much it was nice to see the other Papas get some love because yeah. most of the time on their website, it's Papa 4. And because of Investee Sumam's 10th anniversary this year, we've seen a lot of Secundo's art coming through yeah. and on T-shirts. Uh, there's maybe like one or two designs from Primo and there's barely... There's barely any of Papa Emeritus the third on there, which again, yeah. seeing the shirt that you had in the bag and then like that exact shirt design in yeah. the maybe one or two here and there it's always like i said it's always nice to see him get some love and the other ones get some love too because i mean they're all part of the band's history and the lore and we all feel like we've missed like if you've missed a run of stuff it's it's hard to come back across them because some of the merch just once it's there and it's gone it's gone (laughs) you know this is it yeah but this is i was quite happy um because i was like a a bloodhound on that on that when uh when they released on hot topic I was sat there on my phone, uh, just watching them sell out. I'd refresh the page, and the, you know, within five minutes, all all the sizes are sold out on that one. And then on the next one, and the next one, then I saw they got a restock, and then they were getting sold out. And they that was like the first time I was like, oh, people might actually want to buy these designs. Um, so I was I was you know blown away by the response to that, and I'll always be massively appreciative to people who bought them, and some people have bought all of them, and it's it's mad. It's fun to go on to your website, johnnybush.com. Anybody out there, if you want to scroll up in the show notes and click it and listen to this while I'm talking about it with Johnny, you can scroll to the show notes and click johnnybush.com and go to the website and look at these I'm about to tell you about. 
you can see all the pictures you've drawn over the years and you hover over them and it shows if it's a personal work or if it was a submitted art or where it yeah. goes or where it went. And along with this is kind of where I wanted to get into some other stuff with you as well. I noticed the Evil Dead drawing on there, which let me let yeah. me just go ahead and say it's one of the best Evil Dead designs I've ever fucking seen. I love that movie so much. I, I've told this yeah. story countless times and my listeners are probably sick to death of it, but fuck, fuck <laughs> you. I'm going to say it again. My family owned a video store whenever I was very young. And I'm talking like out of the 80s into the early 90s, you know, so I was there for the ass end of the direct to video VHS boom. And then on the cusp of, hey, I think we might move. This is like when they first started talking about we might put movies on discs. And we were all just like, (laughs) (laughs) no way. (laughs) No. (laughs) <laughs> like compact disc come on yeah and then it happened but uh, yeah. yeah i perused the horror section constantly uh my first movie was a nightmare on elm street at seven like i have loved horror since i was a fucking kid and okay. seeing this design of cheryl in the basement was so fucking cool because the first movie is often looked at in two different ways. The first movie is often looked at as, holy shit, these are great camera angles, directions, and special effects for the time that it had come out. And then a couple of, you know, other people I've heard be like, it's not as good because you can see like it's imperfections and shit, but I still think it's terrifying to look at, especially Cheryl, when she starts getting worse and worse off in the face. And back in those days, they wore the full eyeball glass, like contacts. So you couldn't see out of them, first of all. And they yeah. covered your entire eyeball. So she looked extra horrifying, especially yeah. in that moment when she's getting more and more aggressive and trying to like break the damn door off. So that painting or drawing, it, it was just fucking awesome to see. So I've mentioned, you know, that drawing and some other line work being attributed to horror and like punk rock and yeah. shit like that. What were some of your favorite horror movies like? Or did you have anything that specifically inspired you as far as like you maybe saw like a movie cover? Because that was the big thing about sure. VHS back in the gap was like, yeah, and the, the, if the cover of the tape looked bomb as hell, we had to rent it. We didn't know fuck all about some of these movies. The cover, yeah. the cover <laughs> art sells it, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. Sometimes the cover art gives you exactly what you want. And sometimes you're sold a fucking dream. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is it. It was, we've talked about some of these movies on our show where it's like, Hey, the cover looked great, but the movie was kind of ass, but Hey, the yeah. art was fucking killer. So like, what were you into? Like what, anything that this caught your it. eye, you know? Um, well, when I was little, uh, I've been very fortunate with parents who were just like, yeah, it'd be fine. You know, I'm four <laughs> years old in the video store with my dad, we'd, we'd go and get fish and chips. And then we'd, while they were making that, we'd go into the video shop next door. And it was like, this is in the nineties you know, the windows were yellowed with paper and like bars across them inside it, like a dungeon. It was, you know, it's just so cool. And, um, I'd go in and I'd just, I'd make a beeline to the horror films and you know, they were adult cause they had the little red sticker on the bottom of them. And, uh, I'd be the same. I just, I'd pull one out and go, this looks horrific. Dad, I'll have this one. And he was like, let's yeah, sure. Whatever. You know, not our problem. That's how my mom was. It's <laughs> exactly how yeah. my mom was. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I was the same. I, I, I couldn't give a damn what it said on the back. As long as the, the cover art was cool, I was like, I'm, I'm going to get this. But so I, I've always been a massive horror fan ever since I was little. And particularly like movie posters for horror films always captivated me. That, that was it. Because when I was little, you know, it, it was always hand drawn painted covers, like the old universal horror movies, um, quite a lot of the Hammer House of horror films. But if they were illustrated, I was like, because I drew as a child, I was like, that's what I want to draw, you know, scary, horrible, wretched things to that level that look like a photo. That's what captivated me. And uh, I've always watched horror films from all the black and white universal films, which blew me away when I first saw them. I think my first real horror movie that I saw was the original Night of the Living Dead. And my dad took me around to one of his friends' houses and I'd just sit and look through the videos and they're like little cupboard. I was like, what's this? And she was like, oh, it's a zombie film. I was like, can I take it? And she's like, yeah, yeah, sure. And even though, you know, it's not that scary looking back, when I was like, you know, five years old, I was like, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> this is mental. I was like, there's zombies in this. And um, oh, it's just it's just always, always 
held such a special place in my heart and it never will stop because in my head I'm still going maybe one day I'll do the posters for horror films you know um and it's just the art style probably led into the music as well which with Wednesday 13 and singing about horror films and it's very slowly starting to come full circle I love that. I would love to see that shit. Like, I would love to see you do one for a movie because, like, I've looked at a lot of your art and I've thought, like, this would be a killer movie poster. And uh, we were mentioning again earlier, you know, kind of going back to the art stuff where it's like uh, we were talking about how sometimes stuff gets rejected. Like, we both had uh, seen a drawing earlier for Ghost that we were both just kind of like, I can't believe that got rejected. But you were saying that, like, there's certain things that the band looks for as far as, like, the realism aspect or it needs to be uh, not in a border. And I do understand that where, um, you know, I'm sure Toby's has like a specific vision of like, he wants it to be about as real as it can get, but still be art. That kind of just made me think, well, shit, they're doing a fucking movie soon. <laughs> Give them a damn movie poster. <laughs> no, a <Noah> guy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The UK, that's something that kind of, uh, popped up in my head too when we were talking about video stores and things like that because I, I do want to bring this up before i forget because i will forget because you know like, <laughs> like kind of like i forgot to press record earlier i will forget sure. it's, it's happening. Yeah. my gene pool didn't just take my hair on it took some of the brain with it Come on. <laughs> so in the uk i over here in the states we always hear the term video nasty is that still like a thing over there that they use because i know that was something that they did in like the 80s and like the 90s with certain horror films that were like uh we can't show that here or it's like it's quote banned but i always think the term banned means from theatrical release or do they have it to where it's like it's just they're just not gonna release it like period or yeah um if it is still around, I've not heard it in years. Um, I know some people who make independent films that have you know been shown at like film festivals and stuff, and it's happened to them. They've gone, we can't show it. Are you going to have to cut that out? But then they just kind of go, that's fine. I'll just release it independently then. And then as soon as it starts taking off, they go, oh, actually, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll stop that. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of had a discussion about, it's not the exact same, but Devin and I, my co-host, we just had a discussion about how Disney relegated uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas to its Touchstone Pictures label, which in the 90s, the Touchstone Pictures label was used for stuff that they didn't want to put their name on, but it was still owned. Oh, by really? The yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they were just like, we can't market this to children. And then lo and behold, <laughs> like it's, it's fucking one of the biggest cult classics yeah. that became a huge success on home video and there, and all of a sudden yeah. Disney's like oh yeah we'll put our name on it it's like dude fuck you you ain't <laughs> shit so, <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean so it's like they the, those independent filmmakers like try to get their movies in and these people are like oh we can't show it and then they're like well okay well fuck you we'll do it on our own and then they have success and then all of a sudden it's like oh we have uh fomo big time we just missed out yeah. on all this so sometimes i think though honestly that helps the artist get more notoriety really because what course, yeah. what happens when somebody says hey you can't do that you're gonna want to fucking do it right so you're gonna do it yeah yeah absolutely yeah so absolutely i think if, if it came to the point where if i was making a film or i don't know in what situation a piece of art work it would apply for but if someone said you know you, you can't do it i would go right one well, good it myself and make it 10 times worse then so <laughs> because i guarantee you everyone else will dig it just because some old dude in a tie in an office gets scared it, you know just be horrible, be horrible, be nasty, be violent, and let us watch. Yeah, because <laughs> so, some of us love that kind of shit, honestly. And I mean, it's yeah. it's entertainment at the end of the day. You know, I, I can't tell you how many movies that I have scrolled across uh, when Amazon Prime was first around. And this is before they, like, weirdly, they had this kind of thing where you had to fall within a certain guideline if you were an independent filmmaker to even put your shit on Amazon Prime. Like, we've got friends in California that have a company called Cinema Epoch, and they were talking to us about how they had the most difficult time getting some of their stuff on there, and it wasn't even violent. It just was, like, had to be certain criteria and, like, all this other shit. And it's just like, dude, like, it's it's getting harder and harder for people that are, especially in the um, indie film circuit, to get their stuff kind of put out there for for streaming thank god for yeah. shutter you know and and uh yeah. stuff like uh screen box and you know things like that because like i have found a majority of the horror that i love on those sites you know as opposed yeah. to like prime and shit so i can't even imagine how it it is uh not here in the states you know like it, it seems like everybody's kind of got it working 
both against them and for them at the same time. But finding that that middle ground is a son of a yeah. bitch. You know, with platforms like Amazon, they seem to want to say to whoever's submitting pieces, you know, you you can submit it and we'll put it on there. But, but like you said, it's got to fall within this guideline because then it's more palatable to people. But the people who want to watch the horror films don't care for it. So that's when they go to these other streaming platforms. But we watched a, a film on Amazon Prime and I'm pretty sure it's like one of the lowest rated films, horror films. And it was three minutes long and, you know, like one star. And it was just a, as like a guy and a girl in a field and something happens and then he kills her, but you don't see it. It's just implied. And I'm, we sat there thinking, who's pressed yes on this? You know, and <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck accepts this on there? Oh man, some of it is trash. Yeah, Amazon is not a good place to watch anything anymore. This all kind of ties back into the cover art sells you a dream, you know, at the end of the day. Cause yeah. like I like I said, I have seen some movies where I'm like, man, this looks like it's gonna be shit. And it winds up being really good. <laughs> you know, and then I've seen movies where I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to buy a pizza. I'm gonna get it just I get yeah. settled in with fucking snacks and all kinds of shit, getting like mentally prepared for like this badass movie I'm about to watch, and then I get like 15, yeah. 20 minutes in, I'm like, where's the movie? <laughs> Like, where's, yeah, where's, the exactly. movie? Yeah, where's the movie i saw um, this is exactly it yeah and but i'll tell you like one movie like, i'm really curious to see I, i'm pretty sure you've seen both of them i i hope you have um have you seen either of the terrifier films by any chance do you know what i've not and people have been recommending it to me for so long but it's just one of those that slipped by me and then the second one came out and it's like, okay, I want to watch him now. And now it's like the third one's coming out and I'm like, okay, I still don't have five minutes to sit and watch them, but I, I will. I definitely Yeah, will. they're definitely worth it, man, because I was in the same boat that you were because like we, we did the first one for our, um, our October rebrand in 2022 because we rebrand for Halloween and Christmas every year. And we did Terrifier last year, which uh, right now is 2023 recording this. So anybody out there, don't go 2023 looking for it. You'll find the sequel. <laughs> so because we, we just did Terrifier 2. And I loved the fact that and I'm, and I'm bringing this movie up, obviously, just because like it, it's going to tie into a couple of things. The first movie was born out of um, a short film featuring the same art, the clown character. It was um, All sure. Hallows Eve. It was an anthology, sure. you know, featuring this character and it was a different guy playing him. But then, you know, jump into the first actual Terrifier film and it's a damn good slasher. It got a lot of people talking completely independent, made a shitload of money on a small budget. It made very well, like on its budget. But then when the sequel, sure. the sequel got greenlit, the director was like, OK, we have a pretty decent budget to work with now. This movie made even more like the sequel made even more money. But it was yeah. one of the first times I'd seen a horror movie that was very long. When I say very long, I'm talking like Star Wars long. Like really? current. Oh, yeah. It was like two hours and 40 something minutes, but it didn't feel like, you know, you got lost in it. Yeah. Um, or I say get lost. You can get lost in it, but in a good way. Like the time doesn't feel like it's that long. There's so much yeah. story and there's so much information. There's never a dull moment. When it comes to horror, you don't hear about long shit. If anything, it's, no. you know, typical like hour and 20 minutes or maybe an hour and a half. And some movies are all killer, no filler. And then you have movies that are completely filler. Are there any like movies off the top of your head that maybe somebody out there hasn't heard of, you think, you know, like w what would you consider something that needs more eyes put on it? I there's two films that stand out to me, and I'm pretty much totally detached from the rest of the world. Like my brain is so work focused, I just I work, work, be a dad, work some more, and then someone will mention something. I go, oh, that's cool, and they go, yeah, it came out seven years ago. Why haven't you watched it? You know, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, all right, I'm, I'm only hearing about it now for the first time. Um, but it was, um, and again, I'll say them, and you'll go. Johnny, everyone's literally heard of these films. Like they're big films. <laughs> um, uh, the first one that really surprised me was Psycho Goreman. Honestly, I hadn't laughed that hard watching a sort of sci-fi horror film, and it was completely on a whim. We, I was scrolling through. I don't know. Maybe it was Amazon, and I saw the poster, you know, the picture for it. And I thought that looks cool, man. That was really cool. But then it was like, oh, it's an indie film, and I've always kind of had bad experiences with indie films, just being a bit meh. Yeah. But I put it on and it completely changed my mind on watching these kind of films. And the other one was Deathgasm, which I was lucky enough to make a, 
a t-shirt for and kind of worked with Jason, the director. And um, again, that just completely blew me away. Uh, I can't really think of anything else uh, in terms of films that need eyes on them because everyone else has heard of them. They'll be new to me, but well, you know. Well, to be very fair, Psycho Gorman, fucking fantastic film, by the way. I still consider that one, you know, one where like people do need to put eyes on it because even Deathgasm, yeah. Deathgasm got its popularity on Netflix. I remember that's where I saw it was on Netflix. Oh, really? Yeah, I loved it. But Psycho Gorman, if I'm not mistaken, that's a Stephen Kostansky movie. And he did uh, some of the ABCs of death. Like there was a movie called ABCs of death sure, that yeah. he did a segment yeah, for, yeah. and he did a segment for, uh, I think VHS 94, which I'll tell you right now, if you haven't gotten to watch any of the VHS anthology movies, oh my God, those are phenomenal. Oh, I'll have to check them out. Yeah, they're yeah. great. It's all in uh, styles of different, like, well, different styles of found footage and the way they do it's pretty cool. Like some yeah. of them are done where it's like, oh, we found VHS tapes, like literal VHS tapes or, it's like there was one segment, like without spoilers, obviously, like uh, where this guy gets a cybernetic eyeball and the footage right. comes from the eyeball. You know, oh, nice. Yeah, it comes from the um, video feed that's going back to the computer chip it's, uh, it's linked to. Or you got a film crew trying to do a documentary on this religious cult overseas that like turns like way fucking bad. You know, a ton of stuff like that. And it's fascinating to take that genre and put those kinds of spins on it where sure, yeah. everybody knows like the found footage genre. Most of us got introduced via the Blair Witch Project from yep, the nineties, yep. which I'm a big defender of that movie. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea because like, you know, there were people that are like, Oh, it's not scary. And I'm like, well, it's a different type of scary. It's more psychological. When it came out, it was horrific to see. It, nothing had done anything like that before. No, I, I remember seeing it in theaters where <laughs> we, me and my friends snuck into the movie to see it. It was back in the day when you could still get dropped off at the movie theater, you know, while your parents did whatever, you know, at the mall. Like, because we had a movie theater attached to our mall. It's like, you know, I was with a friend sure. of mine and they were just like, well, we're going to go see this movie. And if y'all want to go see this, you know, some other movie, it's like, okay, cool. And we were going to, we really were going to see this other movie. And then we both looked up and we we're like, oh shit, this is out. And we seen the previews <laughs> for it. And I think we were, what was it? 1998 or 99. We were 12 or 13 at the time. And I was like, fuck it. Let's go in this some bitch. Like, we, cause I was like, they would show the movie times over the entrance. And I was like, well, fuck that's in 10 minutes. Let's just go in here. Yeah. We'll Nobody was, this. yeah. And we were in there like, is this real? Because you know, at the time, that was how it was marketed as real. There were no trailers attached to the front of the movie, and then there were no credits. Like when the lights went out, the movie just started, and I miss that kind of magic. Absolutely, like, it is yeah. There's, there's no mystery to it anymore. Cinema used to be like such a big experience, and now you just go in and follow the format. You know, watch through the trailers. The film comes on. Everyone knows to sit and wait for the the credits because of the post credit scene and then carry on waiting for the second post credit scene that everyone's talked about. You know everything before the films happened. I remember going watching the Flintstones movie when it first came out and they had people in like big suits dressed as Fred and Barney come out in front of the, the screen and I was just like, what the fuck? It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. The one with John Goodman? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that movie. A lot of people kind of forget that, that that's around. I fucking loved that movie so oh, much. It was so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Wait, so they so they actually had people like in like you talking about in the theater like were they presenting yeah, it or it, they were they were going to see it? Honestly, it was like I'd lived through a fever dream. I can <laughs> remember cuz I think when I went to see it, I'd not been to see it that many films. I was really young and um it, you know the 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 kind of lights went down and this like full suits, not just like men in like uh, co in clothes. It was they they looked like Fred and Barney from the the TV series, the cartoons, like yeah. with the big square heads and that. And they were kind of explaining something and there was, you know, the woman coming around with ice creams and a little tray and everything. And I was like, is this real? Like, am, I, am, I in a, am I in a coma, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> was, was that uh, that YouTube video, uh, the, was it David After Dennis, where he's like, is this real life? Is this happening? Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah, God. Yes. That's exactly, it was it. But then that kind of, ruined cinema for me because I was expecting it every time we went and there was nothing. I don't know why it was they had something that elaborate for the Flintstones movie. It must have been bigger than sliced bread in the UK. I have no idea. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know. 
I, I, cause I mean, like I'm over here in the States and I know that whenever that came out, like we had a fucking McDonald's tie in and like all kinds of shit when it yeah, came yeah. out, like we, we had uh, these glass mugs. Like I remember the glass mug thing was such a marketing, uh, somebody, yeah. somebody at McDonald's was like, I know what the gold mine is. And it's these fucking frosted yeah, yeah. glass mugs because we had them for Flintstones. We had them for, I think we fucking had them for both Batman forever and Batman and Robin. I, I very vividly remember having a Riddler mug at some point. Like, where did this come yeah. from? And my dad was just like, Oh yeah, it was at the McDonald's and they were fucking selling. And I was like, Oh my God. Like I was a child going face palming. Like you gotta be shitting me. Yeah. You know, like what, what the <laughs> fuck is this? But it's fascinating hearing that because like we, we don't have shit like that over here. Like uh, I would love we to see, have- <laughs> you know, no, I would love to see people in suits like come out and like we have them at comic cons, you know, like, uh, yeah, that's, sure. but we expect though it's, it's fucking comic con. Like I, I couldn't go to a theater on like a Wednesday evening for a feature of, you know, just saying it came out today. I couldn't go to Wednesday night feature of the Flintstones and have Fred and Barney in costume, like coming out and talking yeah. shit. Like, like, Dude, who does that? Nobody, nobody does that here. You know, it, if you if you do that this here, is, you get fucking arrested or kicked out for like, you know, causing or inciting some yeah. type of like attack or some shit. <laughs> and it's like what I miss about things. Like, I was like, because where I grew up, you had the one cinema. It was called the Roxy Theater and it was fucking run down. Like it was bad. But the actual main theater room was a theatre room. You know, it had the, the giant curtains at the front and red sort of velvet seats everywhere and, ca- you know, ornate carpets going down the aisles and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't like a big elaborate cinema, so why the fuck they had Fred and Barney appear? <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck knows. Dude, what, if, what if they were there on their own accord, like the theatre didn't approve and they just They just got in. <laughs> they just got in, yeah. <laughs> Had their costumes like tucked into a bag or something somehow. They were just cool, like, "Now it's a time to shine." Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just like, well, let's see if we can yeah, get away man. with this. No, that, <laughs> that reminds me, dude. I miss those type of theaters. We had uh, what we called the dollar cinema over here um, in my hometown, where we have both the Cinemark XD at the mall, and then we have the Cinemark Bistro Theater across town. Used to actually like right up the street from where my house is currently, we had a movie theater here called the Charles cinema and it was three screens and it was one of the big three theaters in town in the nineties and hell before then. So when the, the chain theaters came to town, that one, you know, got relegated to two screens and then they would show movies that were in theaters like four or five months ago, but discounted like, Sure. I saw Sin City over there for $2.50 in 2005 or 2006, whenever it came out. And I saw Grindhouse at that same theater when nice. it came out. Yeah. So when I tell you the state of that theater, when I, I, I'm talking like going in, it's old. Like this is in the 2000s. And I know that half this shit was from the 1970s sure. in there. Like the old tattered, like, blue curtains on the wall in the lobby. Then you go yeah. in the theater because you know how we, we have like the big giant vaulted seating now in all of our cinemas. Yeah. This was still back when they had just straight rows that just kind of barely would curb up as you got to the back. And I miss that stuff because those seats were a lot more comfortable first of all. And yeah, they were. Yeah. And it, you could still smell like the cigarette smoke from it just being in the curtains <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and you know what I'm talking about. Like uh, if you've ever, if anybody out there has ever gone to like a concert, like at a bar, like a, a local dive bar where like you could smoke indoors, the microphones, like I used to roadie for my dad's band and hell, like in, in a being in a band of my own, like you could smell like the stale smoke yeah. on the fabric of the inside of the guitar cases or like on the microphones or just anywhere. It smelled like that in the theater. I was like, there's something fucking like I, I'm probably going to get called weird for this. I don't give a shit. There's something <laughs> oddly charming about that because it just yeah. creates this entire kind of like atmosphere, especially seeing a movie like Sin City or Grindhouse where it's like, okay, this is, they accidentally created a great element to see these films yeah. in, you know? So I, I miss shit like that. So hearing you talk yeah. about the Roxy being, you know, just fucking run down like that. I'm, I'm sitting here going, that's a fucking dream for me. I love yeah. old should have been torn down years ago places. Like yeah. I, I love to explore places like that. And hell, if you find stuff that's still open, 
with its original stuff. Yeah. Oh my god, that's that's so amazing to me. I love that shit. It, it's nice looking back on it at the time. It was weird as fuck, but you know, <laughs> it's like the carpets everywhere, and then they, they they even had still the booth outside with the person in it. You know, giving oh, you tickets, the, like the glass stuff. booth and shit. Yeah, oh, yeah, righteous. Um, it was so weird, and um, you'd go in, and if you if you took a left inside the foyer, you'd have like a big grand staircase. You're, scared your foot was going to go through the carpet at any point. <laughs> and there was arcade machines at the top of them. And it, you know, if it, if it ate your money and you didn't get to play, you'd tell someone who worked there and they'd just be like, what the fuck do you want us to do about it? Yeah. You know, they just, okay, cool. And I'm pretty sure if you carried on going up, the lights were just off. There was a whole other like section of a theater there, but it was just in pitch black. There could have been squatters in there. There could have been vampires. Who knows anymore? <laughs> <laughs> But the mystery was unreal. <laughs> oh, I but I would have loved that. Like, I still would. I, I actually, I got sad when they finally tore the building down a few years ago, like the cinema that I was talking about over here in yeah. town. They finally, like, tore it down because they were like, oh, we need to build a, a bank here. And I'm like, well, we have, like, 20 of those here already. We really need a 20, yeah. 21st bank. The one thing that I really wish we had in my hometown, which I've just been seeing... um ads for ghost con uk uh there's a ton of bands that are tribute bands you know for ghost and then there's also tribute right. bands for many other bands that i i love like uh the misfits and fucking like i mean i've mentioned ghost several times but like uh, there's the misfits you know uh, there's kiss bands that are like tribute yeah. bands it, you name it if there's a theatrical element to it it it's perfect for any tribute band to do i wish we had that here even just a, a a good local music scene again, because I miss that. I used to be part of it and yeah. it just kind of, you know, kind of died off really. And, um, I, I love supporting local music. So anytime they do have shows, I like to go to them. Are there any like local bands over in the UK, like outside of some of the tribute bands and hell have you, I'm sure you've seen some of the tribute bands. Uh, you were at ghost con this past year, uh, selling your art and everything. Um, yeah. are there, are there, like, a, is there a pretty good music scene over there, like locally and underground, or is it just kind of like died off or just few and far between? Or I think it's a lot harder for sort of local and underground bands now, um, mainly because the venues, the bigger venues, are just like, why would we bother putting you on? Well, we, you know, we, we're going to book you know, whoever from the States or uh, any big bands. But you seem to find a lot of local bands managing to get a support slot for the big bands now. You know, they, they, you'll have a main support and then you'll get shit bags from down the road. Yeah, you know, bring them on. But it is, um, it's good. The, the, the tribute bands are really good. You know, um, I was, when I was at Ghost Con UK, unfortunately I was still vending for most of the, the bands. I, I managed to get in at the end to watch the, uh, uh, the Ghost tribute band, which is, Awesome. Um, and I got to kind of got to meet a few of the guys from the, uh, the Misfits tribute band and the Ramstein tribute band. I can't remember the names, but, um, I could hear it from upstairs and you, and from upstairs, you're thinking it doesn't sound that far off, you know, like <laughs> it sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. I, I love that because the first time I ever heard of a tribute band, this was forever ago. Like I'm talking like forever ago and it was a Van Halen tribute band. And I wish I knew what the fucking name of that band was. But at some point, I think the guitarist for that tribute band wound up being David Lee Roth's guitar player on one of his tours because he knew. Oh, the really? Yeah, because he knew the material. It's like that movie Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg and like how they uh, yeah. they kind of base that on how Judas Priest had their one replacement for Rob Halford for a while, how they, they found him in a tribute band, how journey and their current singer, Arnel Pineda, they found him in a tribute band sure, too. Yeah. It's nuts to think that, you know, what if Tobias decided like, you know, whenever, you know, the time comes where he's like, well, I got to replace a member or like, we need somebody else. Or like one of the members is like, I can't do this anymore. And he's like, yeah. looks to one of these bands. It's like, Hey, you know, the shit, come on. Like that's, that's the thing about tribute bands. Yeah. Like you can play the music that you love to play. And it's obviously like, you know, a love letter to the band itself. But then it's like, you never know. You might get a fucking phone call one day. Honestly, I think people think that it 
these kind of opportunities are, you know, like gold dust and they don't happen. But like it does, it literally does. You know, it could be looking on YouTube one day and go, oh shit, that guy knows how to play the song. All right, email him. They don't need to train him up. Just tell him to shake his hips on stage and be fine. Yeah, no shit, right. (laughs) Throw a mask up, just say, hey, like watch footage from this past tour and do that. Just, just do yeah, that. Yeah, just do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's so fascinating to me. I, I enjoy uh, tribute bands very much because I feel like you have to like. It's like back in the eighties. You are totally gonna get what I mean when I say this. Back in the day, you had to be good. Like you couldn't fuck up. You, you couldn't like sort of know your shit. Like you had to be good to make yeah. it and to be in a band. And like most people kind of shat on hair metal back then. But let me be one of the first people to tell those people those musicians could fucking run circles around you on their instruments. They were fucking beyond good. And they only looked like they sucked because they played in the pocket. Your bassist and drummers played in the pocket and your guitar player shredded like a son of a bitch. And your singer could hit all these high falsetto notes. But guess what? they were good at doing it. Like you had yeah. to be on top of your shit. And yeah. in these tribute bands, you got to be on top of your shit to do it. Yeah. And the, you know, and the, and the hair metal bands were drunk and high as shit and they could still do it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <You know? laughs> exactly. I remember Motley Crue talking about how they recorded like, fuck, they were talking about whenever they recorded their Dr. Feel Good album, they were like, yeah, that's the first album we recorded completely stone sober. I was like, fuck because cool. all your other shit still sounded good i mean you can tell now like they didn't yeah. play with metronomes because that's back when bands played live like they actually did live recordings in the studio or yeah. they would like just do it with no click track and they still kicked ass like you know yeah exactly music is great all over the place i appreciate anything that's out now and is out then but i think the landscape changed a lot in terms of yeah. how it used to be done to how it's done now like, I don't think a band like the Misfits would, I mean, they could because they're the fucking Misfits, but I don't know that they could get away with doing an album just the same like they used to do, like back in the late 70s, early 80s, you know, like whenever Earth AD was out and all that other shit. Yeah. Like, fuck, you know, because it didn't matter. They were punk rock. It was sloppy. It was, you know, yeah. it, it, that's how you played. Now, you know, producers are like, no, we got to we gotta make it sound it's as pristine be, as it's possible. It's got to be polished, yeah. I can't picture a polished misfits. Like I know it's happened like as up or about as polished as they could get, you know, when Jerry yeah. was like fronting the band, but it's been cool to see uh, Danzig back in the fold for as long as he has been. Cause it wasn't supposed to last yeah. this long. That was just supposed to be that nah. one year. And he's like, yeah, just, yeah, yeah this is the, uh, <laughs> this is the one year we're doing. And that's it. And it's like, dude, y'all are still fucking playing shows, but Hey, I would hope to see them one day, like in this lineup, because I've been a fucking long time misfit fan. So yeah, absolutely. It's one of those. If he says there's going to be a show put on, people will come, and then he'll go, "Oh, put another show on." Then <laughs> keep going. Have you seen his movie? No, I keep seeing um, pictures from it. The, the, the vampire spaghetti western it's house a, of death thing. Oh, because that's his other one that's coming out. Like I've been waiting on that one. We <laughs> we cheap plug. If anybody out there is listening, if you want to hear one of the first times, well, it wasn't one of the first times, but if you want to hear one of the first versions of the current incarnation of the super media bros, go find the episode that Devin and I did on Veronica. That's, that's the Glenn Danzig movie that I was talking about. uh, Veronica, (laughs) that movie is an anthology of a comic series that he did. And it was called Veronica. Yeah. It's so, how do I put this? Glenn Danzig became Tommy Wiseau for a hot minute. Do you know what? I was just about to say, is it anything like the room? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it is the room of horror Weirdly dude enough it is. <laughs> yeah yeah it's the room of horror i think we actually said it like that on there too because he had the budget and he had like these hd cameras and these people in this movie and it shot very well i say shot it looks good like the cameras that yeah. were used, it looks good but it, it just kind of <laughs> makes the flaws that much more noticeable and it's oh. like it's the so bad it's good it's like it's pretty fucking cringy <laughs> dude like it's it's one of those movies where i'll just say like this get get a bunch of your friends <laughs> together get a bunch of beer get yeah. food and just be prepared to laugh your dick off at it it's fucking it's That's the good. funniest damn shit ever and we we actually put that up against cradle of fear which is danny filth from cradle of filth it's not his movie but he's in the movie 
and sure. it's shot on video. It was a movie that was shot on video, so it looks VHS, like you know, super yeah. high high frame rate. But it was fucking decent for what it was, and what a pair of movies to watch back to back. So <laughs> do with that information what you will. But Veronica was one hundred percent the room of horror. <laughs> I'll have to look into them. It sounds, it sounds awfully great. <laughs> I'll send you know what. I'll send you a link. I'll um because yeah, I don't yeah. know if it, I'm not sure if it's streaming. It might be streaming like for rent or whatever. But like I will send it to you as far as like, hey, I think this yeah. is where you can either buy it or you can like rent it or whatever. Um, yeah. I guess to wrap this up, since we're like kind of on a roll with like movies and like the room and shit like that. And we've talked about bands and stuff like that. Yeah. What what is the worst movie that you have ever fucking seen? Like personally, because like the room is widely regarded as the best bad movie. And I and I I quite love the room actually. I'm I'm sure you do too. But like like, <laughs> it, like what what is like in those regards? Like what what is probably like the worst movie you think you've ever watched that you that you can remember? Cool. You go. Oh, I'm gonna have to think about that one. Um. <laughs> oh man. I've been so selective with what I watched like the last few years. Um, I don't even think I've given myself time to process a bad movie because if it gets like 10 minutes in, um, I will just turn it off. There's one film I can remember from the like last year and I'll say this and people will go, no, it was a fucking, it was a phenomenal film. It was, it was amazing. Um, it's a film that I saw on Netflix called the empty man. I've, and ne- it's, I've never heard of it. It's like, 10 really cool ideas that someone's just gone, I can't pick one. Let's just, just use all of them. Let's just put all of them in this film. It's like these hikers in the Tibetan mountains come across this sort of huge, I don't know if it's a real thing or if it's supposed to be a statue of like this giant monster human in his cave and it infects one of them. Like It gets in their brain and he goes off and kills his friends Okay, I'm following you so far. And then the the next bit of the film happens and you go, why did you show me this? This has got no bearing on anything. And then it's a man trying to find his daughter or like his daughter's killer or something. And then it's like a, a a space cult. And then it's like a Cthulhu thing. And then it's time travel. And then, and, and I, honestly, it's like a three hour long movie. Three hours of this? It's super long. And it, do you know what? It probably even isn't. It's probably like an hour and a half, but it felt horrific. And... I probably had like 15 minutes of this film left and I just turned it off. I, like, I don't even care anymore. That's fucking n- awful, dude. Not a clue. Could not tell you one coherent thing. And it just angered me. And I think that's probably, do you know what? That was the worst film I've seen in a okay. long time. Okay. Now I know I, I, I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see it just so I can like, I, I want to be able to like share this experience. And that way, like when we're chatting later or whatever, <laughs> I can, I can text you and just like, Dude, you're right. That was like the worst fucking thing I've ever seen. I can't I I can't get any of that <laughs> part of my life back whatsoever. I would rather yeah. watch Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey again. I would much rather anything like that, which I don't know if you've seen or heard of that, but I've seen the uh the trailer and the the pictures of it, but I've not I, I didn't watch it, no. Put it to you this way, like as to wrap up this one, like I'll I'll just give you some movies like uh that one. Yeah. That one is is kind of fun to watch and it's fascinating as well because like it's one of those movies that fell into like the whole uh public domain. So like they're able to do it and yeah. it made it made so much money they're giving it a sequel. So there's that. Oh jeez. Yeah. yeah. Um I think two of the best movies, like surprisingly two of the best movies I saw this year was Evil Dead Rise and Five Nights at Freddy's as far as horror movies go because I thought Five Nights at yeah. Freddy's did phenomenally well with the source material and Evil Dead Rise was metal as fuck. Yeah, I really liked it. Really liked it. I I figured you would. Like that's um yeah. I I compared Evil Dead Rise to Dead by Dawn as far as like where I rank it like in terms of that whole franchise but yeah um definitely check out if you haven't like check check that winnie the pooh movie out man it's um it's 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 something it was it was definitely a movie sure. <laughs> it was definitely a fucking movie dude i really appreciate you coming and hanging out on here with me man i know you uh you had said this was your first time doing something like this and it's um yeah I- i'm really glad that you were like yeah i'll do it because i've been wanting to <laughs> shoot the shit with you for a a hot minute you know just on yeah it's been fun like, good i'm glad um <laughs> do you have anything like you're doing as far as like do you have any kind of appearances coming up you want to promote or just any uh anywhere that anybody out there listening can go to buy your merch or buy your uh your art anything like that 
Sure. Um, so the only thing in the pipeline thus far is I'm um, hopefully, <laughs> I say hopefully, um, going to be doing GhostCon UK again next year because um, that was such a blast and everyone was really nice. And just to meet people that I've spoken to and people that I didn't even realise that I've spoken to, uh, you know, it was just so nice and such a lovely experience. And from that, we've grown more friends and people have been messaging me. It's just, it's been really lovely. Um, I don't have any other appearances. Um, you can find what's left of my current art prints over on my Shopify store, which I think there's a link on my Instagram. Or if you look on some of the posts, you'll find a link. Um, but yeah, just keep your eyes out for more artwork that's going to be on there soon. I've got some things in the pipeline for that. Um, which is going to be quite relevant to the Gons posting group. Um, and yeah, that's that's me. That's me wrapped up. <laughs> awesome, guys. And if you are a fan of Ghost and you like shit posting, come search Gonst posting on Facebook and join our fucking ragtag group of ghouls and goulet <laughs> and all the fun shit. It's, it's a blast in there. Be sure to scroll up in the show notes below to click links to all of Johnny's social medias and be sure to follow him. Be sure to visit his Shopify store, buy anything you see that you like, and keep supporting this guy because um, that's what makes this world go round. I, I love supporting independent creators. I love supporting the art community. And I mean, coming from being a musician myself, like that's where it's sure. at. You know, like that's that's your bread, like that, that's your bread and butter. That's a lot of you know, it's a lot of how we like either make our living or that gives us our um our mental health like a great yeah, you know absolutely. boost because uh I think I think the world could use a lot more positivity these days, really. Absolutely it does. I think we need as much of it as we can get now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, dude, if I'm ever over in the UK near your neck of the woods or you ever find yourself here in the States, I swear before before I enter whatever lies beyond this life, I am going to have, yeah. uh, I'm going to share a fucking beer with you and just bullshit with you over some music, dude. It's been a fucking, that'd be great. Yeah. It's been a fucking <laughs> pleasure talking with you, man. And, um, I know I'm going to see you, you know, in and out of the group and, you know, on chatting yeah. here and there. But, um, everybody that's listening yeah. out there, we really appreciate your time. And, uh, Johnny, thanks again for hanging out with me, dude. It's been it's been fucking awesome, and uh, I'd Thank love you to have yeah. much for having me. Yeah, for sure. I want to have you back on whenever uh, GhostCon comes around this year. That way, we can promote that and everything too. So you're always welcome back on anytime you want to come hang out with me. So thank you very much. <laughs>